You're listening to The Downside, the Downside. with John Marco Cerezi. Selfishly, I'm glad that you're a little late because I'm often the one that's late because I just, I'm, I'm, I'm glad someone else from the west side of things is showing. It's hard to get it, here. It's a ridiculous. Because it uh, I, I have a rule for myself. I will never leave more than an hour and 15 minutes ahead of time. Because that's the otherwise that's a, it's it's a fucking crazy rich. thing. It's like but living I do, in I do New an hour, Jersey. I do yeah. an hour and 15 every time. And sometimes I'm still late. I'm just, I'm, well, I, I was very late yesterday. You live, you, live very, you live very far north. And the thing is, you have good house parties. As you should. Yeah. Because to get to your place. Okay. Yeah. No, I know I'm far. 207th I'm Street. I'm where far. I think that's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> so shut the fuck it's up. It's off an express train that runs just more reliably than This is than all relative. Here. Okay. Like, no. where do you go grocery shopping here? I, there's a Trader Joe's not far away. There's oh. a Whole Foods not far away. Hey. And I door dash everything now. Okay, great. Okay. And then where do you go? Like, if you want to go get a sandwich or lunch or dinner. or uh, are there There's any? a lot of food places. Yeah. There are. Like a sweet green yeah. delivered. Oh God! <laughs> you can sweet green deliver. Do I walk to get? What do you? All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> how about how they're so fucking annoying at sweet green? Hey, it's we like, can relate on that. We are. can connect on they that. Are. Right? They, it's like you know, if you put this, if you put the dressing on, you better eat it with it. Shut the fuck yeah. up! S- and yeah. wait, how many times? To- like, I order on sweet green, and I, like it's the basic fucking salad and they're like we're out of lettuce they are out of, of, we're out they of, are out of kale everything. they are out of they, kale every the, other day right. and i don't get salads that much from there right. but like if i going once every two weeks and 50 to 75 percent time they're out of kale how how right. I, I order i order the guacamole greens to go just so you know there's no avocado today yeah. and i said oh, I oh well then i'm it's, not getting that. that right yeah it's the main fucking ingredient. Yeah, and, we're not ordering crazy things in and addition. And they don't even offer you anything. Nothing. Like, they just, they don't go, we can substitute blank for, no, yeah. you have to fucking pay for it. It didn't, you, didn't used assholes. to be that way either. It didn't used to be. It's like the last two years. Yeah. The worst really. thing I ever did, I walked out. I, I, did I, walked it, I didn't out. get I'm, the salad. Like they did the salad, then there was no bread. And I said, I don't, I don't want this then. And what'd they say? They the, probably stared at you like, because they, they're they, like they robots. Threw it, they, they, th- they threw it away. I was hoping they'd say, well, then just, just take it. <laughs> but they threw it away. God, you're we both so stood annoying. <laughs> Go fucking buy a piece of bread. Dude, we're on Go the same to- side here. <laughs> no, that's not normal. They had your salad. They ran out of you fucking just bread. Just the free I know, salad. But, no, but you need bread. <laughs> You, you, it's not filling enough to have just a salad for $21. Then go get a fucking piece of bread. <laughs> it's the bread is like this big anyway. I get I get three extra pieces. Three How much? Extra pieces. No, oh, they just give it to me. No, I, they don't. No. I go, oh, here's how I do I go. They shouldn't be doing do that. Mind, I say like we're doing something naughty. I'm like, do you mind if I get, a little, do you mind if I get a, some extra? And they're like, okay. <laughs> I'm so they mad They don't give you. me shit. How do you ask? Do do I don't, a, I don't, I, I do say, this, hi, just, I'm so nice. I'm like, hey, how are you? But you know, it also, what about the workers that are like, oh, I guess I got to go chop up some cucumbers now mm. and I'm going to walk really slowly and then I'll pick up the knife and then, I mean, it's like, oh my God, Well, it feels like it. it feels like a lot of those chain places from my limit you know experience it feels like there's one person really working right and then and then there's like seven or eight people kind of like loading supplies moving things from here to there but it's like it's like i feel like one person gets a shift and they have to do everything and then everyone else kind of like mills around it's a it's a wait did you tell your story about your car rental thing no i didn't i don't think i did you should tell but but Uh, i i think i struggle where i'm like i'm like Everyone's underpaid. All all these people working in these places are underpaid. Right. So I feel a certain degree of like, don't don't be too mad at them. They're being treated poorly by capitalism. Right. But at the other side, you're like, well, you gotta you gotta own. You gotta it. do own something here. It is your or job. leave so someone else can I, do it. I when I was in high school, I loaded trucks. I loaded heaters on trucks. It was the most boring. I worked in a factory to make extra money. Like, I I did it. It was a job. Did you get so, strong? Were you like, uh, oh my God, I was so strong. I was so hot. <laughs> then I was a, a lot of people don't know this. I, in between my freshman and sophomore year in college, I was a toll collector on the New Jersey Turnpike. Really? really? Yes. Well, how, how was that? So boring. But yeah. now 
<laughs> you have to realize I grew up before you know, phones, social media, right. no computers, nothing. So you would sit there for eight hours. You weren't allowed to have like a TV or anything. You could maybe have a radio, I think. And um, I there were three shifts. There was the 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., and mm. then 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I worked in the summer, so I would move from exit to exit depending on who was on vacation. Oh, and, I see. And so I went from nine, <laughs> exit 9 to 13. And I swear, to, at the end of the... Um, I love the story. At the end of my... You know, in August, when I was getting ready to go back to school, one of the head, the guys at uh, at 16E was like, hey, I can get you a job at 16E full time. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to work at 16E? I'm like, no, I want to go to college. This is the fucking most boring job. And But it... You know, it was also not everyone had the same fare because it was the turnpike. It depended on where yeah. you went on. People would leave me, you know, tens thinking they're ones and twenties thinking they're ones. And yeah. And all you the would time. just you just keep it. Pocketed. Well, you're supposed to like report Give it. it. To the state. Um, but it's like you're in the middle of a thing and then a car's coming and you're sure. like, yeah. hi. You know, so one time someone gave me a 20 and um, and I would always put the money aside uh, and then buy pot. But I would um, put the money aside and, you know, if they, whatever, if they came back, whatever. So I'm I'm doing it and I'm in the middle of a shift and I put the money aside and then a, an hour later, I don't know, someone comes back. She, I had gave her a, tw what am I supposed to run out on the fucking turnpike and yeah. start screaming like, so I got in trouble and I get hired back the next summer. Wow. Hmm. How much of a time, like, was there lulls in people? Oh, coming? yeah. Okay. Especially the eight, staying away. Late, late at night. One. From the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. was torture. But it was funny because at night when I worked that shift, um, there would be a lot of trucks. And I was 19 and hot and skinny. And, um, I would get like a sh like all of a sudden one trucker would be like chicken lay nine, and then I would get you know ten thousand truck and no one would get any no other lane was would get any fucking cars. Do wow. they leave tips? They would go hey no keep, they'd be like the hey chain. what's up and then and then when that's they, a quick hit you got to hit yeah. on them yeah. quick that's speed but dating. I got a lot yeah. of joints and stuff from people going to the Garden State really? Arts Center yeah for a concert they're like hey who I'm like oh have fun I wish I could go and they're yeah. like here ugh. yeah <laughs> and you know the pot then was fucking like oregano do you miss did you miss that pot or was it just terrible I I. I don't oh. know. Was it awful? It just give you headaches? Full seeds? You know, there, this is what it was. It was like, I got Colombian. I got Hawaiian. You know, like. Yeah. The, and a lot. And it wasn't. It's like now is really weird. The pot. Because you, we used to just roll selfies. Like little joints. Yeah. For our, you know, and we'd sit there and smoke. And you wouldn't get like, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and now you take two hits and you're like, yeah. it, it's so concentrated now. Yeah. Well, Russell doesn't do a lot of pot, but he told me he had an edible. I want him to do an edible and us to do the podcast. And he said he had an edible. Toast. I, and, I, he, and he was like, he was like, I, I, I could never do the podcast. I just stared at the wall for three hours. I, I, I couldn't move my limb. Well, I, what I, did you take? Well, I you said take how many milligrams? Indica? I yeah. said how many milligrams? He said, no idea. I said, go get the bag. And how much? Go get the bag. 65. 65. What? See, I don't that know. That is I horrible. It was a gummy. You take five it was a, or ten. It was a gummy. Oh, five or I ten. Mean, that's exactly right. five. Five. I'm gonna go out. I didn't know. Start like, at five. I, see, I took half, and I didn't feel anything for like an hour and a half. I should have waited longer, and then I took the other half. It's and amazing then how I that like, story. We all know the story. I didn't feel anything, and I took more. It, and I get, yet we I, all I, repeat I, it. I, that's why I like the gummies, but I don't because I like at least when you're taking a hit, you get a you know. Well, sure. it's like, it's right away. Yeah, but the gummies. I, you know, I have this, um, one of my, uh, sponsors of my podcast is microdose.com uh. <laughs> and what? No, it's just funny. They got that website right out the gate. Well, they microdose THC. So they have entry level, um, uh, uh, gummies that are 
they're like three or something oh. and they're so good but you can you know once you get used to it then you can take you know two of them or three of them but then they have all these other amazing strains of indica and hybrid and sativa and they're fucking great mm. and they're you know, five milligrams. You take you take one. You take two. You yeah. can't have fucking sixty five. No. What is wrong with you? How, did you have couch lock? Uh, what does that mean? Where you can't. You're like. Uh, I. I mean, I could move, but I felt time felt so slow, and I really. Were you like, I gotta get out of this. Anything. I gotta get out I of this. I just was like laying on the couch, staring at the ceiling. I tried watching TV. It didn't really. It was too slow or too fast. It was like it was very weird. I did not like it. Um, but I know that I took too much, and uh, so I, I'll probably try a quarter of that. Let me real quick just to jump in here. So today's episode is brought to you by Microdose.com. Yeah. And uh, do you have uh, Microdose.com? No, we don't have oh. any sponsors. <laughs> no, they're really good. I didn't mean to do it, but I was just no, thinking. No. Yeah, and I've and I've I get a really big discount, so I'll give you my discount. Okay, but yeah, yeah, um, sure. they, they um they have you know like I've given it to people who are so anti taking anything. Yeah, and I give them that three. Yeah, that entry level, and they're like, it just takes the fucking edge off. Yeah, that's good. How okay. can I get stunned? I don't know, it depends. I go, I'll go weeks with. I'm like, I don't feel like it. I do these mints now. They're two milligrams, two yeah. and a half milligrams. I do enjoy that. Yeah, like, and I, I, I'm in the middle of writing. You know, we're at rewrites of my. I'm, I have the show coming. This off yeah. Broadway show coming out, and uh, we start rehearsals next week. And I just sit there all day with my writing partner and his dog. And, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, I can't. And then you, you yeah. take a little yeah. gummy, and it's like, yeah. what? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll do it. You know, it's interesting. I'll do it a lot for a week and then I'll be like, eh, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but when I, I started smoking pot when I was 16, maybe 15, 16. Yeah. And, you know, the shitty pot. And then I was a pot. I like I smoked all through college and like wake and bake. Um, Not a lot. I was not sometimes on the weekends, but sure. not. You know, I'm pretty responsible. But then when I had kids, I was like, I can't, you can't. You don't right. want to be compromised no. at all when they are that vulnerable. Like, I don't know. I would be, I feel like I'd be silly with the kids in a way that would be fun. I wouldn't be responsible. Right. But like, I could like play with their night. action figures. Right, right like, before they're going to sleep or something. Yeah, but yeah, not yeah. when you're out and, you know. Yeah. Sure, sure. And you're just like. I would leave them somewhere. And I never do anything before I go on stage. Yeah. I feel like it's my job and I want every syntax in my brain working. And also, I just don't understand how people can do that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've done it once or twice with Stone. And I get if I get to a place on stage where I'm like, are they laughing at the joke or because I'm being weird? Right. Because you're and so introspective yeah. and yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. be yeah. you want to be aware of what the fuck is going on in the room. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I just. Yeah. What did you when when, when you were raising your kids? What did you tell them about pot? Like, did you say, do it? Did well, when they, you know, look, they went to public school in New York City. Yeah. So I knew, I was like, look, just, I said, do, I told them, if you're going to smoke, do it here. Uh-huh. Um, do not do it outside. Do it indoors. Never do it outside. This was, you know, Before 10 years ago. Right. Sure. Yep. My I dad said, would always tell me the story. He'd say like, son, even if someone's smoking a joint and they say, hey, hold this joint so I can tie my shoe. That's when the cops bust you. Mm. And he he was like, he was terrified. And he was a hippie. And right. he like acted like he never did drugs. He was one of those parents. Oh, he just God, lied. I, wait. He just lied. Can I say something? Yeah. Please. I have so, I am, ve I was very open with my kids. Good. You should. And and I said, you know, and I did. I told them to smoke here. Um, at what age? At, eight? Shut up. Um, when they got into, high, you know, when they were, yeah. when I knew they were fucking smoking pot, sure. you know, um, I said, don't ever carry it with you. Don't ever bring it to school. Don't, don't have it on your person. If you, you know, let someone else hold it, you know, but, um, and I said, when they went to cop, you know, I said, I'd prefer you smoke than drink, you know, mm -hmm. which I would prefer. I think alcohol is so dangerous. Um, and so, especially when they got their license and stuff. So, uh, there are so many parents who I know who were total potheads and act like, oh, 
oh, I never did. And I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. seriously? Yeah. Yeah. It's so annoying to me. And you set up your kid poorly. To, 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 there was one time I got in trouble at school where there was it was after a theater thing and there was a big strike. You take down the set, everyone got drunk and high. And my year we got busted. And there was some year where they like confronted me. They were like, we heard that you got drunk at the thing. And I should have just lied. It was the school. It wasn't the police. Right, right, right. And I should have just lied. And I wouldn't, they had no proof. But because my parents, your parents should also tell you how to ch cheat now right. and then. You need to know the system. That not to say anything. Not yeah. to just, yeah. but yeah. instead what they do is like be good, knowing they weren't good, knowing right. that all human beings are flawed. And then you have this dumb kid getting interrogated. And he's like, I did, I did drink. Because you don't tell the kid the truth. Right, right. And uh, my mom, on the other hand, she she did a lot of drugs. She was honest with me, and you know, she told me the time she did acid and how scary it was for her. And like her honest story of that made me more hesitant yeah. about right. drugs. So I was like, oh, that sounds pretty scary, right? As opposed to, I never did acid, so don't you? She was like, I did acid. I was in a closet for three hours, mm. and I'll never forget it. My mom was at Studio Fifty Four. Oh, she yeah. was like, right. My uh, girlfriend was at Studio Fifty Four. Our neighbor, who's now. 80 um did told the, she did acid in the 60s and she said they all did acid and then they got in the car they're like we're driving to florida and they packed all their stuff up and they got in the car and they're driving to florida and then four hours later they come to and they're still in the driveway <laughs> Oh my God. I remember I was with a group of friends who did acid one time and I was the only one that didn't. It was four of us. And it was daylight savings. So we were springing ahead. And I just remember the night. And I was sleeping on one of their couches at the end of the night. And it was, it was like a good, like it was, I was almost did it, didn't do it. And when we got home from that party, one of them was crying and he was, couldn't remember how to poop. But he felt like he had to poop <laughs> and he was screaming from the bathroom like that he had to poop, but he didn't know how. And it was like a good like, OK, I made the right decision. Like they were. What all, did you tell? I, you're the sober they, they one were, in the room where you're like, no, I just like at a certain point. I was like, I wasn't fun anymore. I was a little drunk and I was just like, I'm going to pretend to be asleep and like just lay on this couch <laughs> and then leave like sure. when the lights out. Um, but it was it was it didn't seem fun. Like they didn't have fun that night. You know what I mean? Um, all right, uh, I do have to say real quick, for those people listening, this is The Downside. This is a place where we talk about the negatives. We let people complain, kvetch, uh, whine. It's just so perfect for me. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I, and if you're a fan, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside, bonus episodes, ad-free episodes. What do you do on episodes. your, um, so how do you do your Patreon with your podcast? Because I want to do that. Yeah, right. But it's a lot of extra work, It's right? a lot, of, it's extra a lot work. of extra work. So it's evolving. Right now, we do live episodes. The clips are the thing that are getting the most. In right. These clips. That's just the world. We're Wait, living. we're live right now. No, 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 oh, all right. no, no, no. But we do, we do live for show the Patreons, episodes. Patreons. So we, we get the clips yeah. so we can use the live episodes for something. But that's only on the Patreon. We did some weird thing for Amazon where we did live over the phone episodes. That was on. So we just I'm putting up a I recorded a clean album. I'm never going to release. I'm going to put the video on the Patreon. Go for it. You're a fan of me. I'm doing a clean that's album. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, d I didn't want to do it. I'm a cursor. You're oh, a cursor. I'm a cursor uh, from from like the time I was fucking five Who years was, old. My dad was a businessman, so he was always on the phone, like screaming on the phone. Really? Fuck you get the fuck. And that's how I knew every curse word from an early, early age. Who was it in your family? No one cursed. I mean, my there there were these were this this was what they said: bitch on wheels. <laughs> Um, that phrase. Yeah, goddamn son of a bitch. That Is was my mother. Is bitch on wheels a compliment? No, she's a bitch on wheels. Oh. I don't know what. That means. It my sounds parents, like it could be I'm a gonna compliment. tell you, my parents were born in 1916 and 1922. Wow, wow. They were older when they had me, but yeah. Back and then, my, saying you said bitch, the room. And my grandmother evacuated. was born, and she, she she came every weekend and shared a room with me. She was born in 1896. Wow, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. What was it like sharing a room with her? I loved her. She was the best. Um, she played basketball uh, when when she was, I don't know. She was, she couldn't even vote until she was 24. Can you imagine? She lived till I was 25. Wow. Yeah. And um, she was always like, you know, have good penmanship. 
Um, she told me you can smoke cigarettes, but only smoke a couple a day. She loved beer. Um, but, she, you know, they were from New York. So yeah. uh, my mother grew up on the Upper West Side, which is mm-hmm. not, like a nice area instead of this fucking shithole we're in. And... Um, yeah, so I come from I came from older parents who were like a generation older than all the pe- kids my age's parents, you know. How old were they when they had you? 40 40 ish, little wow. over 40 and 47. Was that cuz you know, I once did I once did a roast battle with someone and they said the only thing you can't make fun of is the fact that my dad was old when he had me. And their dad was dead. They said joke about my dad being dead all you want. They were very sensitive because I guess they were bullied or they felt ashamed. Or there was something about having older parents. Like, did you did you notice in terms of your friends' parents how much older they were? I wasn't that aware. Um, they lied. To, like, my father lied to me. Like, when he turned 60, I was like, they told me he turned 50. And oh. I was like, the whole day, because I am so I was so obnoxious. I'm like, oh, you're a half a century. Woo, you're a half a century. And he'd been a fucking half a century for 10 years. <laughs> and then when my grandmother turned 75, they told me, oh, it's a joke. She's really 57. Like, they would just fucking lie. Lie. So, um, <laughs> That's so stressful. You're like, oh, my God, so, my grandma's seven years older than my right. dad. Right. <laughs> and so I was, like, remembering when I found out. Like, I remember I was visiting my grandmother and I saw like a paper she had filled out and they said, uh, and this was like in the ni- early 80s, mm-hmm. you know, and it said date of birth and it, and it was like 9, uh, 13, 96. And I was like, 90, wait, 18. I was like, fucking, yeah. oh my God. It yeah. freaked me the fuck out. And I was like, and there, it's just a lot of hidden shit. Like my father served in World War II. Um, Where did he go? He went to England. He was there during Blitzkrieg. Um, Jesus Christ! Yeah, but he never talked about it. Um, so you didn't know? Or- I mean, I knew he. You know, it. It was just. I didn't pay. I was around old people all the time. Yeah. Do you know? If what I, I had but- gone to war, my kid would would. I would never shut the fuck up about it. I know, it but they didn't kid. do that. They didn't. They sure. did. My grandfather, same thing. He never really talked about World right. War II. Right. World War II, I think, was a really. Yeah. But here's the thing. I, they were, I think, good parents and different parents than, you know, like Elisa, my lover. Her parents were like 21 and 22 or 22 and 23. And she is always saying, my parents were children. When, you know, yeah. my yeah. parents were set in their ways. Yeah. They were, you know, they didn't give a fuck about, you know, what other people, you know, th- there were all these like young people, you know, young parents in their 30s or whatever who'd buy like big cars. And, and I'm like, why can't we have that? And, why? and they're like, because you don't need it. And it doesn't mean they're rich. That thing, yeah. that none of that means they have money at all. And I was like, but, uh, and they were just very set. And like, I didn't have a big party for my bat mitzvah. My sister had like, they had dessert after her bat mitzvah. My brother, they had <laughs> brunch at the house. Yeah. You know, like we, it was like, no, that's not what it's about. But they were, and that's what I grew up with. And I resented it until now. Like we had this huge vegetable garden. They grew all their own vegetables. Uh huh. Um, they did my mother knit and sewed and you know i don't know we took music class it was very old-fashioned a lot of reading a lot of um yeah they didn't go through that whole drug you know i that was the other parents with the studio 54 shit. Yeah, yeah, well yeah. not even because it's really that our generation were they but, chill with you smoking pot did they not they know? had no idea they had no <clears> idea <throat> oh my god i just got in the car with my brother and sister last week because my brother was visiting i went to new jersey to you know have dinner with him and my sister and the, some other family and he, and we're at i went to new brunswick because i went to rutgers we all went to rutgers and uh they're in the car going how many drugs did you do and i was like i don't know and i don't know six like different and i and they're like and my sister's like like what and i said all right pot <laughs> coke you did coke i'm like oh my god i can't well but, uh, if you said six coke's 
in the yeah, ones that yeah, like, that's definitely like it's yes! on like heroin, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm and, and she's when and I'm like mushrooms what and like <laughs> they were just you know <laughs> my 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 siblings did mushrooms before I ever did my little brother yeah. I went to my little brother like so uh, should I be scared yeah and he's like I got to get back to high school <laughs> yeah fuck you yeah. Um, I yeah, so I, I I am really old fashioned. Like, I I handwrite thank you note every time someone invites me to dinner or something. I'll handwrite a thank you note, and they're wow. all like, "Oh my god, thank you so much!" Like it's, yeah. but that is how I grew up. I, I and I try to teach some of it to my kids. Like, the when we I think the first time we worked together, we did that that reading, which I'm gonna go ahead and call it god awful. Uh, we did a reading of a play together. What was the reading? I it forgot. was uh, at the Friars Club. Uh, I, I, you, see, if it's shitty, I just block it out. Yeah, out it was, I kind of remember uh, it. I, yeah, I feel I feel mean, and now I feel mean. What I what I said about it? Uh, uh, it was about um, it was like SNL back in the day. Uh, it was like about old comedy, like in the sixties and seventies. I, all I remember, the thing I remember the most. You you were watching uh, your son play basketball on the iPad oh, in like so the green funny. room, and you were like you were mad at that ref. <laughs> I've gotten I've well, you what? I got kind of kicked out of a game. <laughs> what level of game? High school. It was high school. Co- okay. It was high school, and, and this is here in New York. This what? Well, he he ended up he went here in New York. Uh-huh. Um. And then he went to uh, Northfield Matt Herman, which is a prep school for was a D1 feeder uh, for his junior and senior year. But he had to redo junior because, you know, when you reclassify. Mm. So he was at public school, freshman, sophomore, junior, then junior, senior at North Northfield. Then he went to Tulane and then he um, transferred to Trinity D3. He didn't like D1. OK, so we're at. Le Mans school, which is this private school down he- down here somewhere, like mm-hmm. by Wall Street. And, <laughs> so you're already in a bad mood. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, exactly. Because I had to fucking take the train. Anyway, so we're down there, and um, he's playing this. And, you know, he went to public school, and, the, the, like, the prep schools are a little cunty. You know, yeah. like, they're... The the parents are like, Ugh. you know, he played with Michael Cohen's son. Really? Yes, he was because he. T- there's this great program called Mo Motion, which is run by a female, um, and Maureen Holohan, Holohan, whatever, uh, and she taught Ben how to shoot. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's called Mo Motion, and so. A lot of those, that was an extra, you know, he would play basketball for the school, but then he also played in these AAU teams and all this other shit. And so we're at Le Mans and the kid, like they're so, they talk, sh- I know they talk shit on the court because I always ask them, oh, what that one say to you, what that one say to you. And they were just being fucking assholes and say, you know, and Ben is really good. Like, so he would make a million shots and they'd be like, hey, yeah, yeah. and like, and finally I just said, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like you're so fucking nasty. I don't know if I said fuck, but I said, shut, shut, <laughs> shut up. Don't talk like you know. Like it was really. They're just on the court, and you just see them snickering to each no, other. No, no, they are screaming to him. Oh, the par- the oh, kids, the, the kids. kids, and the parents aren't doing anything. Yeah. They're not like shut up, shut up, and these kids are just. And I just said. Stop it. Like, shut up. And they're like, uh, and then the the coach, the other coach was like, get her, you know, we're going to call the police. I said, call the police. Have fun. Enjoy. And Ben's like, and then I just, I went outside. I just had to stand outside, but I was so mad. You know, it's, I don't know. It's so disgusting. And so it happened. The, I don't know where the hell I was at a college game and they were, like screaming shit his his really close friend gil who uh plays on trinity with him you know i knew they were yelling shit and they're yelling at the coach like just rude horrible shit and they were yelling to gil about i guess they looked up his parents and they were yelling about and i told them to shut (laughs) i did it again and they all looked around at me and were like what you know but they 
last year they called Ben a, a fucking Jew. Oh my god! Yeah. So on the court, like he was playing. Yeah, they were like fucking Jew or something, and he said something afterwards to the coach, and they got in trouble. And now they make an announcement before all the games not to say fucking Jew. <laughs> yeah, to exactly. say Semitic things. <laughs> That's crazy. It's unbelievable. And they're all people. Like, here's the thing. Your kids play sports. Uh, you know, look, my kids had two moms and they were both pre- like Henry was really great at soccer. Uh, ben was just unbelievable at everything like baseball. And, and you know, I'm dealing with these fathers who are living vicariously, yeah. you know, like, and I'm just like, oh, my God, shut the fuck up. Like, it's not that important. I'm sorry you, you know, didn't yeah. make the varsity team, but yeah. it's it's a lot of this competitive and they're so invested and I'm in that, like, I love the games. I, w- I don't want to miss any of the games. I'm really into it, but I'm not like, my sure. whole self-esteem is like about, right, you know right. what I mean? Now, when you get, when you get angry. Which is d- 20, sure. no, you know. And my five, dad, my four. dad was, I mean, I have my anger things and my dad, it comes from my dad. Do your, do your kids ever go, mom, please, please don't make a scene. Cause I do that with Every my dad. Every fucking, ev- like, I'm bringing someone over. Can you please act normal? Like it's always. Yeah. Um, and then when the when the when the friends come over and they're like, "Oh, your mom's really cool," then they're like, "Oh, mommy," you know. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, because I do have the I have no frustration tolerance. Yeah. And I get like the the reaction doesn't match the offense a yeah. lot of the time. Um, and I have ADHD, so I get really mad at myself. Like I, a lot of it is taken out on myself. Like I thought I got everything together and then I forget one thing and I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like I get really mad at myself. I feel very, I, first of all, I, I do think I have ADHD. Uh, it was being with a girlfriend. I feel it. I, I need to go get it checked out, but I do that too. And I'm loud. There's just a degree of like loud too. Loud and I understand. I have to because I'm. For me, if the train would happen to you today, if they oh, got I, on the speaker and I was going to your place for your podcast, and I and they said, you know, you got to get off the train, I'd be like, fuck, God, damn that's it. what I did. Fuck, yeah, I did. I got. I, they're like, I'm sitting there. First of all, I had to wait forever. I kept saying it was coming and it didn't come. And then they're like, next stop, Second Avenue, and then that's it. Get off. And I'm like. I just said, what the fuck? I literally was like, what the fuck is, what? I'm just talking, and I talk in the air. Yeah. Like you fucking yeah. ass. And, and what do you, when you, because you don't do that. No. When you see people who do that, truly, what's your thought? Um. Well, listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I think it, it depends on the thing. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think it's a common thing in New York to see someone get mad at the train. That doesn't sure. really phase me anymore. I would say if it's not that situation, if it's like a, another situation where I see someone yelling in public, it's I, I steer clear. What do you do with your rage but, though? Well, you have rage. What do you do with it? Because I'm like, I have to do it. It's a release valve. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like I get it out in the 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 show. Like I get to yell and stuff a lot on the in the mm. the show I'm in and you know I don't know I don't think I have a healthy way of dealing with it because I do there are times where I'm not doing something I'm ha- happen to be in a show now where I get to yell and do all He's that in stuff Titanic. Um, oh I uh, want to see that you so gotta come bad see it. Yeah, yeah. We, I was just talking about Mazel Tov that's yes. it's like yeah, so, and Dara Roth is the greatest she is I met her once quickly okay Daryl Roth this is the theater that Russell's performing in, right? Yeah, but yes, her but a as a person, she's a real person. Uh-huh. is such a champion for, uh, you know, underheard voices and theater. And she's just one of the greatest women um, I've ever had got, the, you know, the chance to work with and be friends. I like, I fu- she is, go Daryl Roth. Okay, Great. so, but I, all right. I do this thing now, and so they know when, and I really, they're like, mommy, can you not take, can you not, you know, they're like, calm down. It's not that big of, you know, Uh because Ben's studying psychology. Henry's full of rage. (laughs) He goes overboard too. Um, But I do this thing now, like, I don't know if this happens to you with the ADHD. Uh Uh-huh. And by the way, Elisa, who is also a fucking therapist by trade, 
you know, you don't know how hard it is to be in a relationship with someone ADHD and is always showing me these fucking books. And I'm like, you're annoying too. So shut the fuck up. My, at least I have a disease and you are just annoying. Okay. <laughs> so I do this thing now, like, you know how you're in your head and you're really focusing and then something happens to fuck up whatever you yeah. had and then you can't handle it. Like yeah. something drops on the floor or you're, you know, it's just, I go like this now. Mm. And that signal everyone. And they're like, mommy, but I go. Mm. So you used to would have like yelled, screamed, right. fuck. Like, you, yeah. you would have, like, like yesterday like I, Eddie was there, my writing partner with the dog, who's the sweetest fucking Lucy. And I was in the back. I got a bad phone. I don't know what happened. I was like, fuck, fuck this shit. You, don't fucking tell me what to do. I'm fucking sick. And he said, and I went back in the other room and he's like, um, Lucy didn't really like your yelling. And I was like, oh, I made the dog comfortable. But I do do this. Sometimes I can't. I'm so enraged and it's over stupid I'll shit. try that. I'll yeah. try just keeping the mouth closed. You go, mm -hmm. But, I, you well, know, I what would like be scary? <laughs> <laughs> if you're next to me on the train, and well, I, listen, would you I have me go like, I, fuck, God, fucking damn it. Or... <laughs> No, I actually guys, I think I think in public stick with the fuck because there's something really unsettling about but I understand in, in the in person as in long as people know what's happening. That's how healthy. Tova, my girlfriend Tova, she yells at the Alexa like yeah. constantly. Yeah. And I tell her please Please, it's not helping. I can't do that. I cannot have. I, I don't. First, ask I don't trust for it. anything. First of all, Siri knows sh fucking nothing. Nothing. Fuck Siri. It's like I found on the internet. Shut the fuck up. Like just look it up. Read a book. I can't. Okay, wait. The other thing about getting angry. I'm gonna tell my dad these. Okay. The other thing. First of all, I like I had to work out after the, my phone call yesterday. Uh, Eddie was like, "Go on the Peloton right now." I'm like, "Okay." Um, <laughs> But it's the, it's the, in like it's, I, I, I the, what makes me so fucking angry is like, you have a job, it's really easy, and you don't do it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that thing with sweet green. When I yeah. look and it's like, we have no lettuce, I'm like, so fucking mad. Like, would you I'm, take it out on them or do you hold it in? No, it's not their fault. I know, but like, where do you put I, it? But there's an oh, injustice I start going, that's Fuck happening. Fuck you, Steve. Then it changes my whole plan because I order it before I go over there. But mm. um, when people can't do their jobs or say they're going to do something and they don't do it, you know, that kind of stuff drives me crazy. You have one fucking job. Yeah. You know? But your parents, do they ever yell? Do you, like, I'm oh, like, they yelled it's my all dad. the time. Oh, so it was from them. Okay. Yeah, my mother yelled. My father would yell. He does the thing that I did with the, you know, he'd yell at the sprinkler. Like I yell at inanimate objects. Yes, that's, that's, I've always said, like, yeah. at least I say, I don't guide it towards people. It's that's always that inanimate that, objects. I say that all the time. Like, Elisa will <laughs> get mad at me. What other excuses do you have for your anger that no, I could use? No, but it's true. I'm like, fuck it. And I feel, oh, I do this whole thing where it's like happening to me. Like I have a black cloud and God is doing this to me. And why is my life so hard? It's like, yeah. and my friends just make fun of me. It's like, yeah, the whole world is, you know, revolves around you and God is like, whatever. I don't even know if I believe yeah. in God, but whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? I do envy having God as, uh, I was watching Amadeus and he has God to blame. Right. I wish there was God just so I could be someone and be like, fuck you, as opposed to just, oh, I do that all them. the time. Yes, nothing's oh, going on. I, this is another thing I do. Really? I swear to, to God, when something or happens, to anything. That, you're gonna do this to me today. Great! I hope you enjoy. Like I have these fucking stupid conversations. And I'm God like, comes down I like that made Jesus uncomfortable. Yeah. I can't Could you believe go, I. I don't. Oh, yeah. Oh no no no. I'm I, a Jew. I, I, of course. Um, no. Yeah. But we're no. all Jews here except for Russell. not, Russell's not no, a Jew. No, I'm sorry. But, not at all. Uh, maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can't believe I'm telling you all my little secrets. Well, about no, because my dad. I think I've told it once, but it's it's like. He he took it out on people, and he took it out on his staff. Like oh, you no. know, because he's 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 stupid. But there was one time I always remember where we went to a restaurant. We were getting it to go. And there was a woman there he kind of knew in the, the village Potomac, and uh, she said, "Oh, you look kind of sad." And my dad was like, "Well, that that's because I am sad." And she said, 
Like you know when you get to the gates of heaven. Oh God! Oh no! I know. So, so oh, and I, no. I'm just and I'm just seeing. I'm oh, a little. And I'm a little boy, and I'm like, I'm nervous. I want to run up to this older one and be like, shut, shut the fuck up, please, shut the fuck. <laughs> when you get to the gates of heaven, Jesus will not isn't gonna be curious about why you're so sad. He's gonna want to know kind of why you lived. She was trying to be helpful, and my dad goes, you know what? Fuck you! <laughs> and grabs the stuff and walks out. And, oh, and it was man. like a fancy restaurant. Fancy I restaurant. That. I love that. But oh. as a kid, I think it gave it if to think it gave me a lot of anxiety. I was scared to bring right. my dad in public. I'm scared for him to be in a comedy right, show. Right, right, yeah. right. And he's just he can't control it. I've never met your dad. You've never met him? No. Which is crazy. You know, I do think my mother would always not let something just pass like if someone dissed her or treated someone else like shit she would always speak up and i think and i do the same thing and i think sometimes the kids are like just let it go and i'm like no i'm not gonna you know injust like i can't you know what is i mean it, is it a jew jew because my girl my girlfriend she oh uh, I, I she was coming home one day i was on the phone with her i was on the road and it was late and she like went to our door where there's a little, you know, uh, by the mailboxes and stuff. And there was a guy in there who like wouldn't open the, didn't open the oh, door. Oh, I do that all the so time. She, but she goes in and goes like, did you see me? I was standing right there and I'm on the phone with her and I'm like, baby, baby, what, what are you doing? Baby? Oh God. What? What? <laughs> baby, what's your, what do you baby, say? Baby, 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 baby. We call each other Dar, Dar, short for darling. And anytime we've been That's on the cute. road with anyone, they all like... Ted Alexandro calls us Dar. Everyone calls us Dar. Tom Papa. Every fucking person we've ever done a gig with. What do you um, call Nicole John other Fish. than the B word? Yeah. <laughs> Rachel. Uh, What's your know. term? I don't know if I have a... You don't say baby, you don't say hun? Maybe baby once in a while, but not like a... Ew, it's not like baby. A, it's not a normal... It doesn't... I'm, baby's too like... Baby. Hey, baby. I'm trying baby, to think. Baby. I think baby's more hetero? Oh, it's yeah. really hetero. Yeah. Yeah, and it's baby. so role playing. Like, you're the baby. Oh, baby. Oh, Last baby. night we did, so it was like, I'm in baby mode now. <laughs> what does that ba mean? Baby mode means I'm turning off all the lights. I'm locking up. It means oh, that. It means oh, she's take done. care of me. <laughs> she means take she's care done of me. for the night. Wait, yeah, yeah, so yeah. how long have you been married? <sighs> Seven years. Wow. Seven, yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven years. Three wow. to go. That seems three. How old were you? <laughs> how old were you when you got I was uh, 31. When you got married? 30. 30. See, that's good. How old are yeah. you? 34. Oh, you're a baby. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Baby, well, you got married. I mean, you're, look at, you're looking at me, and I had parents that were, you know. Yeah. How old were you when you got married? I did, we're not married. What? Your, your first? My first? We couldn't get married. It was. Um, you couldn't? Okay. Yeah, there was no gay marriage. We All were right. together for 20 years. Did you did you want to get married or at the time were you I like I fought for marriage equality mm. and I fought all through the AIDS crisis like I became like you know when, once I like 80 middle of the 80s the end of when the when the virus came out right and yeah. it was hitting gay men and it I can't even like I, can't, I when I look at videos from that period of time I get like PTSD. It was like I. This is so. I rem I had dinner. Lisa and I, Dar and I, had dinner with some younger gays um, several months ago, maybe almost a year ago. Uh, who we we have dinner with, um, you know, every few months, and they're in their twenties. And I was sitting at the table, and I was looking at all these gay people who can get married who you know don't have to think about you know and i anything and i remember being i was like god i remember being their age and i'd be sitting at dinner with my friends and going i wonder if i'll ever see that person again or you know yeah, yeah. they look horrible or they're sick or they got it or you know and it was this you, know, you talk about the pandemic now but for our community it was like all these young yeah. people who and it's also before social media so if people died you'd find out in a more disjointed right. way right but you knew because if you were like involved like i worked at the aids walk i volunteered at god's love we deliver i marched and marched and marched um and i i remember when they were doing the aids rides you know where they would draw, ride from 
you know, Boston to New York or L.A. to wherever or all the way across, I would go to the campsites and do stand up, you know, like, yeah, it was we really were fight and it was life and death. And so I think a, there's a lot of this is the downside. Uh, there's a lot of gay privilege now, you know, um, a lot of young gays who don't realize that just, you know, 40, 35 years ago, we everyone was dying, it, like yeah. literally dying. Yeah. And, and you realized at that time, you know, people were together for 25, 30 years and their families would come in at the end and leave them with nothing. Yeah. Wouldn't let them go to visit. Uh, wouldn't let them at the funeral, would kick them out of their home. I mean, it was awful. And that's why we fought so hard for marriage equality. So we couldn't get married. Mm -hmm. And then I met Elisa, still couldn't get married. And we've been together 16 years. And she won't, will only get married. She Her, her birthday is December 31st. My birthday is November 15th. And in that six weeks, we're the same age. Otherwise, she's a year older than me. And that's the only time she'll get married. And it's been 16 years and she's out of her. Now, do you live together? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, and you, we do. And you, yeah. we yeah. don't live together. Oh, that's interesting. How, for the I whole gotta, time? I gotta or, say, well, for the whole time or, or you decided? All, <clears throat> well, we own it. We, I bought a house in Provincetown oh. right after, in 94, right? Um, Damn. I had been on All American Girl. I got my first like sitcom, yeah. And I took the money and I bought this house. And then, so she had now she's bought into the house, so we own that house together. Okay, cool. and we live there together when we're there. But she lives in Harlem. I live on the Upper West Side. All right, talk to me about it because I think that's the, the, that would hurt Tova's feelings. And I think how many nights do you spend together? Like, do you go there? Does she go here? Yeah, she comes to me more than I go to her, which. Because she has a car, well, she has a car in a garage and she's, it's easier for her. But, um, I would say three, four nights a week. I just, there's sometimes, and I get this on the road at least where I sleep right. very peacefully. And also my girlfriend has night terrors. So there's like a real oh, reason. Oh, Henry it. had those. They were horrible. Really? Yes. Would they wake you up from the other room? Oh yeah. What it's were horrible. they like? It, you had to like calm them the fuck down or just hold them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're horrible. Does she, is she on antidepressants or anything? Uh, no, she takes she takes clonopin. Oh, uh, to help with it. it right. They've gotten better overall. Right, right. But there, she got mugged a while ago. Oh, and, that's and terrible. That's what she, Fucking she's asshole. Pretty sure start, and she she chased after them and got the phone back. Good. Fuck that <laughs> motherfucker. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I have. I know someone. I was in this show, this off Broadway show, and he is. A professional understudy. Those mm -hmm. people are fucking it's geniuses. Wild. It. it I can't even. Uh, whatever. And so he's he's been with his partner. It's got to be forty something years now. Forty three, forty four years, whatever. Um. And they live in Midtown, and one lives in apartment five A, and one lives in apartment six A. And they spend all their time together. And then at night, they're like, "All right, night, night." Yeah, I like it. It's, I know, I'm telling you. I like the option. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't need it all the time. Play nights together, but I just think it's yeah. nice as well. But well, it, it's it, like, you know, you get home from work and sometimes you just don't want to fucking deal with anyone. Yeah. That's the other and, part. And I get home, real, like, I'll go out and do a late set and I don't want to, you know, she's like, you're going to make me, like, she doesn't, she's never lived with anyone. So she doesn't get that you can kind of figure that shit out. But, you know, I like coming home and not. Right. And be yeah. able to do whatever the fuck I want. Especially yeah. if I have like a bad set. Sometimes I'm like, I just need to be alone. You if never have a bad set. Judy, please. Okay, sorry. Please stop. I've had plenty. Uh, uh, so, you, but you adopted, so you adopted your, or not adopted. No, no. So, you uh, co-parent so, adopted. What no, is it called? No. <sighs> Good research. Thank you. <laughs> really do your due diligence. Um, I know they're different. Ex, I know they're. I know they're not biologically related. Different sperm donor because we right. ran out of the first one. Right. So Hen uh, so my ex had Henry, and then I adopted him. Uh, was that hard at that time? It. We had to wait till he was almost one. Like I, I had all the paperwork in, and then it took like ten months or 11, something like that to 
get a court date. Was it more difficult because it, you were lesbian or was it? it yeah, wasn't a- it's, it was, you know, it was called a second parent adoption and it just, it just had passed. But when I had been and Sharon and I broke up when they were two and a half and seven and a half and she hadn't done the paperwork and that since she moved out we didn't live together we were we were not you know legally married we had um uh, there's no bi- was no biological connection to mm-hmm. Ben um that was a precedent setting case in the state of New York wow for cuz it was a it was cuz we had broken up and um you know there was no she had no legal there was nothing you know in the eyes of the law that made her a, a parent of this child sure. and um so this was good for divorced gay people everywhere i mean i just i thought you know what i had i could have said you know fuck you yeah but we had those kids together i didn't want like you know henry to be going back and forth and ben just staying with me it was like they're brothers we had this family together and they're gonna stay together and so the judge yeah and then at the oh this was we're in the judge's chambers and at this time i was already with elisa it took years and um we're in the judge's chambers and she asks the kids i guess they're 10 and 5 um do you know what's going on and uh henry said yes and he looks at ben and says now we're full brothers and they hug and i was like i did the right thing yeah and it wow. was just so that's very sweet yeah what and year then is he, this 10 and 5 so that would be 2007 wow or yeah 2007 how what are, I mean, that is not that long ago. No, that's what's crazy about you know, when, all this. When we, like, when Henry was born, like we had to carry papers to prove that I was also. It was like, it. You know, it's just. It was so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. There was a time Sharon, Sharon was with Ben. Ben was a baby. She was getting on a plane, and they were like, "And I'm mommy, and she's mama," and the they. She's and he was a lap baby, even though he was gigantic. And they said, "Oh, is this your mommy?" And he said, "No." And they're like, "No, my mommy." He said, "No, my mommy just left. She's not here." And they were like, "What?" Oh, and she's like, "I'm mama, right, Ben? I'm mama, right?" And it was just like <laughs> that always helps. But, when I'm mama, uh, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> And it was also, you know, and also anytime you took him to the doctor and I wrote an article about when Ben got his tonsils out and they treated us completely different than the other straight pair. It's like, you know, you don't realize until you have to fight for like basic human rights and dignity and to be treated like you don't realize what it's like. Yeah. You know, and and I, you know, you think about how do they treat you? What was there anything significant and or that you what did you notice that they did differently? What the, the the in this particular with the tonsils like? Oh my God! First of all, every for, Henry went to school when he was in kindergarten. She's just like, "What do I write, mommy?" It says mother, father. So then I uh, then I called Christine Quinn at the time, who was speaker of the house. She's amazing, and I was like, "These forms have to be changed to parent guardian, parent guardian," because after nine eleven, it's not even gay. It's like how many kids lost their parents in nine yeah. eleven? You know, yeah. how many kids have parents you know who died of cancer or incarcerated or whatever or live with their grandparents? Like it's ridiculous. And then um, when he got and so when he got his tonsils out, I, you have to read this article. They use it as a learning piece now. Um, I bring him to the doctor. He's on Sharon's insurance and we're checking out and they're like, uh, the, the receptionist, you know, it's like, okay. And then she looks up, she said, um, so who's the real mother? Like in front of Ben, mm. I said, are you asking who the biological mother is? I can answer that. But don't you ever ask that question to another, uh, you know, same-sex parent. 
And I knew I had to, like, you know how you can be like, oh, I don't feel like getting into it. Exactly. Yeah. You can't, if you have a child sta standing there, if they see you yeah. go, oh, um, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I am working. You know, like you yeah. have to show. Because the easy thing would be like, she's the real mother. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, oh. And you can't. So I said, don't ever ask that. I'm the biological and that's his other mother. And he's on her, you know, like, and don't ever say that again. Yeah. And then. How did she react? Did she like go? She I'm was so like, I was, you have to be kind and firm, but you have to show the kids they can't shy away, you know, like yeah. they, so anyway, and then, um, so he gets the tonsils out and Sharon and I are both there and they're like, one parent can go in when he goes under and one parent can be there, you know, and you can decide. So we're, you know, Ben is so like, whatever, I don't care. And, um, and we get there and the forms are mother, father, mother, father. So we, you know, I would get a fucking Sharpie and I, you know, You're change writing mother, margins, mother, you mother, can't mother. Say this too yeah. gay. So they, we, there's another people, there's other family in the waiting room and the kid goes in and both parents go in. And I go, why are they going in? Mm, oh. And they're like, well, those are, and I said, we, you those know, are like, what? Right. Like so that, that, that plus the forms and then, I had, you know, I was so infuriated. And so he gets the tonsils and he was staying with me. Because I'm the better mom. All right. So anyway, he's staying with me after <laughs> you the surgery. You mean which is the better mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, kidding. Um, no. Uh, so he's staying with me and uh, he go. I go out. He's my, maybe 11. I don't know. And I go out. He's like, oh, my God. And I said, I'm going to go out and get you some ice cream. So I go out to get ice cream. And I remember I was walking on the street and my phone rings. And he's like, Mommy, they just called from the hospital. You know, because they called to say. And they said, um, is your mother or father home? And I was just like, and I didn't know what to say. And I was just like, fuck. And I wrote to them and I wrote this article for Huffington Post yeah. about how to treat, you know, gay families and the president of New York Presbyterian wrote to me and apologized and but it's just that kind of shit but then you realize you have kids they have to come out all the time because yeah. every kid's like how tells your dad you know and they ha they have to learn how to come out too yeah yeah uh, yeah, it's shit most so, people don't think about. No, it's, it's just supposed to be such an uphill battle because everything, everything is says mother, father for, for a certain amount of time. It must, it well, takes and so it's long. It's also crazy, like you said, like you're like that's 2007, like, which does not 2007. feel 2007. Well, I always at think all, about, but like, you think it was so, you know, so you, much has happened. I mean, you, I, uh, you know what? I was born 17 years after the Holocaust. Yeah. That's like nothing. Well, speaking is specifically, you mentioned uh, younger gays not knowing like what people have. Like I think of one of my first. I remind I remind people of the Holocaust when, whenever <laughs> I can. I do <laughs> all the time. Anytime an argument when, starts going yeah. south, I say, "Let me tell you about something." Uh, right. Uh, one of my first bosses in New York, she's a lesbian. She's probably seventy-five now. Disgusting. And she. <laughs> um, she would tell me stories like like when she because she's been in New York her whole life. She had to like run out of bars like in the 60s, you know, like run out and hide from police. Like you're like, it's just it's wild. I yeah. remember I told this on stage a few weeks ago because there were these young gays and they're like, yeah, no, my parents know. And, I don't know. and I'm like, oh, God, you're welcome. And so <laughs> I remember. So Sharon's a big executive right and when she, the i was must have been 25 whatever and she gets this she has her first big business trip in amsterdam and she, we're you know she's like okay we're gonna go and we're staying in this big fancy hotel and she went with another uh colleague who was straight and married and we go to this big hotel and she's at a conference for like three days and I can't even walk into the hotel with her. I can't be seen with her. I can't even, like, it's like I had to stay clear. Meanwhile, the woman who was with the husband was like, and I would, so. For, is this a work kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, it was or a work hotel? thing. Oh, okay. Oh, no. It was a it work, was work thing. You, they couldn't know that you were. Right. I mean, we're in Amsterdam. I'm sure they didn't fucking care. But, yeah, yeah. You it would know. funny with Titanic, you, they were like, 
you told your wife like you can't come in here with me. This is yeah, because everyone's gay. Here oh, so um, yeah, so we sh- they couldn't know. So we would meet somewhere else like yeah um but in the mornings when she was with the colleagues you know in in the um in the lobby sometimes i'd go up to her and be like hi are you from the united states do you Uh, know and she'd be like get away from me (laughs) get away from me (laughs) um but i had to i hung out with the other one's husband and we just got stoned all day and went to museums but then they could he could walk in and you know i couldn't be seen with him it was ridiculous wow or she would have gotten fired do you feel like I think what I've been surprised with uh, politics recently? I think I always had an assumption, and again, I was a theater person, so like I feel like I was always, uh, you know, near the gay community, and I assumed everything would get more accepting in terms of, at the very least, people being gay, and then it yeah. feels like with the with the the stuff in Florida and the gay oh teachers my God. Arizona, with the drag Arizona, queens Arizona, like this week today or whatever the drag th- the show. drag where I've been I think for myself I go oh how stupid of me I believed that uh, acceptance of being gay like there was so much I felt like there's so much people must be used to it by now People must oh be. Oh my God. It happens in New York with the drag thing, too. But, but I, we had a black president. I was like, oh my God. Yes. Yes. We did. No. It. What, who do they come after when they're, you know, they come after the Jews first. Uh huh. And then, you know, they come after the gays. They come after the marginalized. They come after the blacks. They come after the Asian. They come after, you know, it, no. This, we are becoming a religious, you know. But sometimes it's even without the religion. I think I've always been surprised. It's the same way like in Russia. It's, it's uh, you know, horrible oh, towards yeah. gay people, but it's without the religion. And I always find that so fascinating because I always thought religion was the thing right, that right. made people homophobic. And it's more like, no, it's a marginalized community. And so it's an easy, it's an right. easy one to gang up against, I right. guess. Right. And, you know, when, when it was AIDS, they called it, you know. Sure. Yeah. God's, you know, revenge and stuff like that. I mean, it no, they hate us. They hate us. They want everyone to be like, you know, woman, man. You know, first of all, and I used to do, I, I have this in my show too now because we're writing about when I came out on stage, you know, mm-hmm. and how it changed my career. And I used to do this bit about all the people who were allowed to get married and I wasn't. And I have. That's a, that's a, I could. Yeah, that's and a it bet. was so funny. I talk about Eric and Lyle Menendez, the Menendez brothers killed their fucking parents they're in jail and they both get married and then lyle got divorced and remarried someone else like jerry sandusky major molester uh, more rights than i have mary Kay Tourneau, she married her fucking yeah. student more rights than i you know and we're not talking about you know when gay people got married it was the no th- there were more marriages that day than in the history of New York City. And where did they get married? At City Hall. No one's going to a fucking mosque or synagogue or church. They're going to get the rights like, they, so yeah. they could visit them in the fucking hospital. Yeah. There's a story of these two lezzy moms who were at Disney World with their kids. One of them had a massive stroke and they took her to the um, hospital. She was in the ICU and they wouldn't let the partner in to the room or the kids into the room because they didn't recognize gay, this was gay marriage was passed in the state but yeah. not federally and they were like you're not next of kin you're not allowed to go in there and the woman died alone in the fucking oh uh, my god right yeah. and that's that's what your state fucking rights yeah it's so hateful like how yeah. does me you know being in a relationship and having to like how does that affect your fucking but house that, that's what you're, I've, you're, never, I've never understood even the the feeling i always remember my stepfather who's more conservative i mean he's independent who's voted republican forever and you're like okay you hold on to that title you like the word independent but i i just remember as a kid when the the gay marriage stuff was was kind of being talked about more and he was like he was like i don't have any problem with it i just think marriage is between a man and a woman and even at that age i was like what are you talking about right what do you mean it's a made up with just a word yeah and then you're gonna get divorced it's all about property it's just about property and like why shouldn't 
Like Cause wasn't there, so, wasn't like, we'll do civil union. Wasn't that uh, a thing had, at a time? We yeah. had, um, yeah, we had civil, u- we had, what was it? Domestic partnership. Uh huh. Then civil union. It's like, who fuck you like just yeah. because you have a penis and you have a vagina yeah you should have more you know your relationship is more valid than my go fuck yourself oh, i just and i just had this whole argument with uh my brother-in-law and it was you know it was really tense because i get really emotional and it's very painful really? for me how could you not I, about yeah, yeah, about yeah. roe v wade and oh, about yeah. and about you know that you know what i get it it pains me that people who are who love their their in-laws their nieces their nephews their siblings you know um will vote for someone who doesn't believe they should have the same rights as you because it benefits their pocketbook or mm-hmm. some other issue and it's like well that you know it's there's a lot of well that's not my issue yeah it's not your issue yet you know yeah. until you um realize oh my kid's gay oh my kid's trans oh my you know and, yeah. t- and then you're like oh but you it's like i'm your i'm your sister i'm yeah. your this i'm your aunt i'm your like so you're gonna vote for that person who wants to take away a woman's right to choose and you know it doesn't affect you that like that's the hardest part it feels like such a lack of imagination like to just not be able to just a little bit see oh wouldn't that suck if that was you you know like it's so it's also like if you've never had to stand up for your rights or protest or march you're entitled Mm -hmm. yeah you know i'm sorry but you are an entitled person the fuck is that? What's building? <laughs> with other with other apartments. Where's the rest of the apartment? Is it is that a closet? Is that the That's other? a bedroom. That's a bedroom. That's a bedroom. That's a bathroom. So this, this is the, is the living room. So is there a TV here? Uh there's a TV in there. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch something after we can send Yeah, we can a watch a movie shoot. and hang out. Good. We can have edibles and watch a movie. <laughs> that would be yeah, fun. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, it, it's like people don't, you don't think about it because it doesn't affect you da- uh, in your daily life. Yeah. But when you spend your time like going to just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, how can you not be empathetic? Do you feel like things are going backwards right now? Are you hopeful? Yes. Yeah. It's, it, I can't it believe feels they worse. Pre- oh my it god! It feels worse, but it, it's also this is probably like, well, there's a lot of gay characters and gay like it's it's so far it's hard to imagine like, I mean, the, it, you know what's really scary for me that fucking the the books the banning of the books yeah that I don't know if you saw that but picture who reads with, books anymore, Judy? I mean, we're all on the internet. Shut up! Like, it, but um, like I understand like they're no, doing banning- it. Part like, well, good luck. Good, there's no porn in no. the library. I was still able to find no, it at 15. No, 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 no. You look at these classrooms in Florida, and the teachers are literally yeah. covering up these books. Like, you're so fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, sure. seriously, you don't want to read a book? Don't read it. But don't tell other people. You know, art is not supposed to be safe. It is not safe. And you're, Of course. I'm sorry. And that, but I just don't see it. You know, like the way that uh, DeSantis was mad at Disney because Disney said, like, being gay is okay. They, they said the softest thing they could. But Disney, I think the power of Disney is more powerful than the power of Florida social. Because, and Disney, now that it's a big entertainment, Disney is always going to be pro gay at this point, I would imagine. That is, it they doesn't can't. matter. You have a governor let making laws. Sure. Saying you but can't say this. But the kids are going to go, I watch can't. Disney. These kids are going to go watch matter. the Daily They're, Wire for no, their fucking no, no, animation. No, 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 no. Yeah, but think there about was, the ramifications of like changing the educational, like all those books, all the certain parts of history that they're now, Florida teachers are not allowed to mention now or talk about. That does have a trickle down effect in terms of like, it does. The but what about the valedictorian who of of his high school who gave a speech and he was supposed to give a speech and he wanted to talk about being gay, but he wasn't allowed to. So he talked about having curly hair, and you know this kind of silencing people. Yeah, it is dangerous and it is 
It's destructive. It's terrible. What fucking you? The first time. This is what my whole show is about too. But the, my yeah, uh, pro, but it's like you use your First Amendment right. You're like, oh, I don't have to wear a mask, and uh, and then you're telling people what books they can fucking read. Yeah. Fuck you, yeah. you fucking asshole. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, I hate that fucking Ron DeSantis. I know yeah, it's, he's, he's going to be the next he's president. De- it's very no, alarming. he's not. Oh, you you're not scared. I'm sc- that's the number I'm, one. I'm scared because people think like he's like, oh, he's not crazy like Trump. Exactly. You know? Right. He but is. he also he's has psycho. no personality. And yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't believe Trump was ever president. I yeah. can't. I just you can see the personality with him that you can see. Did, now, did you ever work with Trump back in the day? No, I interviewed him. I used to do the show on HBO at the multiplex with Judy Gold. Uh-huh. And it was it was on for 10 years. And I would interview people at the movie theater. It was on in between the f- movies on HBO, and what? And we would go to these multiplexes, and I would interview people as they were coming out of the theater. And uh, someone just wrote to me about this. Remember when? And I was at this theater, and Donald Trump, and I think Melania came in, mm. and I went over and said, "Hey, what are you seeing today?" And blah blah blah. And he was such a dick and a half. But he was like, oh, you're tall. I'm like, Ugh, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> what movie was he seeing? I don't fucking know. <laughs> it had to have been a movie he was in, like Home Alone 2. Home Alone. I've seen Home Alone I 2. I think it was, oh, like, he was going, They those two were going to a theater that was, like, just for them. Do you oh, know what yeah, I mean? Sure, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So they had, you know, reserved the theater. There was so just a guess. clip the other day. It was like, I think, I think Melania took it as Trump listening to Taylor Swift in the car. And it's just wild to think. Him, him, like getting to enjoy that thing, that is like that. That you know, he, it's, he doesn't enjoy do anything. Think, yeah, what are you say, fucking you talking he about? Enjoys he, he, what if he loves Taylor Swift? He, he doesn't love no, he, anything. I think he really likes Elton John. I think that that was and, like, it's that, that was, kind of shit. Where I'm like, okay, well then, you don't well, then get you, to. Can't, you can't. You can't. You, you can't, can't. You can't enjoy you can't. it. It all hates you. You know. <laughs> what about when they play these songs that they're. I know, and then the people are like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, cease and desist." Yeah, you but yeah. you're never gonna asshole. stop it. It's some. It's one of those things. Like, well, good luck. They're gonna play it. They're gonna play it. That that's the price for being so popular that you become a multi multi millionaire. Is is evil people are gonna use their songs. Yeah. Uh, but it is funny to see Trump doing YMCA. That was one that he did. Yeah. And it's like all these Republicans doing YMCA, and you're like, I can't. I can't. Gay, 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 yeah. gay, 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 I think gay, 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 gay. too. I think, did, I think he did Do You Hear the People Sing at one point. <laughs> Incredible. I hate him. I fucking hate him. Incredible. Um, well, since we're, we're gearing towards the end, well, tell us about the, the show since we're kind of talking about hey it. Hey, now. Hey. Um, it's called Yes, I Can Say That. It's based on my book. Well, it's like my book coming to life. I wrote this book, Yes, I Can Say That, When They Come for the Comedians, We're All in Trouble, which is all about free speech and a lot of history of stand-up. Uh and it's about free speech through the perspective of a comedian. And this show, I mean, it's a lot more personal, um, but it's really about, you know, it's funny, but it's also about how the, the how if you shut down comedy and satire, that's the end of free speech. That's mm-hmm. it. All we're trying to do is make you laugh. That's it. And we tell the truth. And you can't shut down comedy. I mean, and you think back in history, it was the comedians in uh, that were telling the truth about, you know, the Third Reich and Hitler passed this treachery act where you weren't allowed to joke or about anything doing or you would get killed. You would be killed because humor is such a weapon. Yeah. Like the fucking orange fuckface couldn't yeah. even go to the White House correspondence dinner. Yeah. You know? And he wanted the DOJ to investigate SNL. You yeah. know, it's fucking no. Do we, you think it's hard yeah. uh, as a comedian, like to say we let comedians talk about what they want to talk about? That then you do open the door, obviously, to comedians who are going to be virulently. Racist homophobic, and, racist, yeah. transphobic. Like, is it is it a challenge to hold on to your values but still say free speech is the most and important I, thing? I think it free speech. You have to, yeah. the haters, you can't shut anyone down. 
Mm-hmm. You can't. You're also like they're showing who they are, right? By exactly. Doing that. So you're like you know who those people are. You're like okay, right. I'm not gonna sure. go to that. You know, like right. that's sure. who their base I is. I think then. like I think comedians had a, a struggle with that at some point that where they just didn't know. I think with Chappelle, it's the same thing. There, there's liberal minded comedians who go like, "Fuck this guy." All right, then don't listen to him. Yeah, you know. Course. I mean, did I? You know, I think Dave's funny. Did I of like course. what he said? You know. No, I don't like everything that fucking comes out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there were people. There were people. I mean, you speaking can't on the Jewish side, people. Yeah. they were annoyed with SNL thing, and I was like, I was like, there's worse. I don't know. I I thought it was fine for uh, the most I, I, part. There was a co- there were a couple things that there were a couple was things. like that's not funny and it's not true, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know. There's plenty of hateful, horrible, misogynist. You know the shit I listened to in the 80s when I was doing stand-up? Of course. Oh, my God. You can't even imagine um, the shit about women and fags and dykes and, you know, it was just awful. You should and, see his act now. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Uh, but, yeah, it was... And and then to go back twenty years and say you said this twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, world yeah. has changed. Yeah, it's sure. changed. We're evo- you know we want people to evolve. I hate that in any community where you're like, yeah, but twenty years ago you said this about gay people. It's like, but they evolve. Like we're here to make you evolve. Yes. And and then when they do, you can't bring up. It's like being in a relationship with someone who's always bringing up old fucking shit that you already resolved. So I do hear believe. That yeah, but you can't when once you stop, you know, it, it, the discourse, then there's no evolution. Like if you stop discussing yeah, yeah, yeah. things or talking about things or yeah, I believe in all I even if I hate what the person's saying, I think you cannot. That's what the First Amendment is, except I have a problem with lying and inciting violence, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it, I have an issue with you know these people who legislate like we're just telling jokes these people who are legislators are saying things that are just not fucking true yeah um and inciting violence and killing people that i don't i'm well, I like saw, we were just watching before you came here mike lindell the my pillow guy oh God, but jimmy he, kimmel had him on uh the show and that he like put him in a tried to embarrass him he only would conduct the interview he was in one of those claw machines literally they put him in the claw machine had kids playing with it as he was doing the interview and there's a part of it where i'm like okay i get the intention here and the embarrassment and they're like look at this huck this uh this what's it called um con man yeah but on the other hand i go okay so let me get this straight we believe this person uh wanted to help incite the overthrowing of the government and in my mind i'm like you know going to the camps this is the guy who would go kill that group gas that group right i'll fuck her like this is we're we're saying that this is the kind of evil within this person and we're gonna have him on the show we're gonna have him on the show dehumanize him or yeah yeah. but but, but we all know know that i know i hate that spotlight's a spotlight and 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 honestly especially on network tv I don't think you're dehumanizing them quite sufficiently, right? Given what you're doing, and the fact that he would agree to that. I yeah, mean, that's the point. You're, like, you're in on it with each other, you right? Know? Yeah. But it's also you like- want to do an interview, and 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 a and a group of of people get to shit on his face like that, like something so humiliating, every right? Day. But this is kind of cutesy. It's cutesy, right? It's funny, right? And he's still making money off the backs of of idiots, right? Who still support him. So don't. If he's this bad, you wouldn't have, you know, Goebbels on the show oh, right. because you think, well, let, let me make Goebbels look like a real dumb dumb. Put him in a vending machine. Like, I think, I just think it's a weird thing that, that these celebrities in the liberal and the conservative spheres, they kind of play around. And I'm like, okay, then you're not taking it fucking seriously. Right. It's like when Fallon had Trump on, yes. yeah. you know, yeah, it was dangerous, It was, but it, but it was also like... No politicians. If I ran a show, I'd say we can't have politicians on this show. I would have like historians or historians, something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, but I wouldn't even have on the ones because you have on this one, then the Republicans go, Well, you gotta have one of these. It's right. like, okay, we'll have one of these. And suddenly you let Ted Cruz tell a cute story on your your show. Yeah. He's a fucking piece of yeah, shit. Yeah. And the constant I mean, I hate George Santos so much, but it's constant. It uh, which I think is in a way good because 
you know, they're, but I think, you know, they're getting the truth out, but I think he, he loves it. He's loving oh, every yeah. fucking- Is there any degree of like, you know what? We had to have some gay politicians who were monsters. You know, he's like, he's no, like, he's like, just like, a- like part of progress. But also, Part of, of course, yeah. and also the fact that he is not who he says he is, and you're not saying, they don't say a fucking thing. Do you know if yeah. he was a Democrat, they'd be like, get the fuck out of here right now. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh. um, All right, let's go on. Uh, we're running out of time. Let's go on to our blessing. You better count your blessing. Sing in the show too? No. Um, Russell, do you have a blessing? Yeah, it's real quick. Uh, I just got back from New Orleans. It was a great trip. Um, I loved it. Um, and I want to just a quick thank you to uh, I don't. She probably doesn't listen, but uh, well, she said she does, but you know, um, my friend Emily Doley. She always takes such good care of us while we're there. She uh, picks us up from the airport. She she brings king cakes. Like she just really always is, it, and she shows us the best places. So I just I'm thankful for her. She's she's a great friend, and she is just a great. Uh, New Orleans person that I'm very thankful for. Um, I'll do a shout out. I, I was in LA taping something for this thing called Don't Tell. Was not happy with the set. Had a very big meltdown. And my my younger sister, who's a dancer, like left me a very sweet vo- voice memo the next day, just being like, you know, just a very like sweet, supportive, uh, you're fine uh, message. And it's you know when when your siblings get old enough that they can really. Uh, be parental in a way for a moment to make you mm. feel good. She just left me a very sweet message. Um, and she, she's the only sibling of mine in the arts, but it was very nice to get that from her. So thank you, Katie. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Wait, do I have to do one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one, What is it called? Something, a blessing? Yeah, something, yeah, yeah, something specific. Something, we've something. complained a lot. We, We're like a nice... Oh, know. all right. Well, um, I just want to say last night I FaceTimed Ben at college and he was on the phone with his girlfriend and he added me in to the FaceTime. Oh. Wow. And she goes to Binghamton and he goes to Trinity and we, the three of us like hung out last wow. night. That's very, I'm from that's, near Binghamton. That's like, that's big. I understand. I know. The, like like big. that he didn't just not pick up the phone. Well, He's I'll like, Oh my mommy. mommy. Okay. Hold on. I'm getting Samantha. In. And I was like, Oh, we're gonna all hang out together. Yeah. I love this. If I was on the phone with and I just brought in my mom, she'd be like, "Oh, what the fuck is going on?" Uh, she'd be cool, but I don't think yeah. it would be a great conversation, right? And, yeah. And it, also, I talk to Henry a lot, and his girlfriend never like is like, "Get off the phone with your mother." Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Well, it is I'm cool. So You're a successful comedian. You know, there's a there's like it's not just like a you know what I mean. Like it's sure. like there's a Cool complaint. Yeah, no, fuck my oh, mom. Please. She's just they, a Pilates teacher. All they do teacher. is complain about me. <laughs> it's like, no, mommy. I'm not, I think I, it, oh, you know what I do? You know, he has practice and, uh-huh. and all that, and I call it rehearsal. Uh-huh. And, yeah. Uh-huh. And like, you know, he, whatever. I use all art terms during his. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, his yeah, sports, yeah. sports shit. Yeah. I, uh, well, that's nice. A good phone call. I tried yeah. calling Russell last night. And I uh, called you back. I, you called me. Phone calls with you Russell. Call, no, you know, no, listen, some friends listen, who like to talk. You called me at seven fifteen. The show starts at seven. I'm gonna call you back no! in the two hours. I'm what in your own. He's on stage for thirty seconds. You'll oh, shut the fuck up. I'm not. I'm on stage a lot, <laughs> and I, I, and then I'm not gonna call you no, it's before I get no, the train it's not home. That. It's not about the way. I called you back at ten fifteen. No, what's funny is when you're on the phone, you can tell that you're you're looking for the wrap up. Within the first couple minutes, yeah, I have. We've never had a phone call that's gone over ten minutes okay. max, and I'm the whole sorry. time I, I can feel myself pulling more things out of you. I you just know? can't believe you guys talk on the phone. Like I, 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 I love talking on the phone, and so I do thought I. your generation doesn't talk on the phone. Listen, I talked to you for an hour and a half yesterday and an hour and a half today on this podcast. So not the same. I didn't have not like, the same. Uh, like uh, you know, like you're one of those. How is New Orleans? Good. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking. It's All a right. night. Well, I'll tell. He doesn't give you I'll anything. You I want to go see that show. I'm so excited. Please, come. that'll run forever, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be running forever. Are long you time. gonna stay there? I'm staying till. At He's least, gonna be there a long. I'm gonna stay in there till at least May something. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens. 
Um, I'm so, yeah. Just yeah. So all great. downside listeners, Russell couldn't give you free tickets. Just message no, I him. I wish I had free tickets. I can you get can't you house do seats. that. No. Do you know how many people are they like, think you can, yeah, they're you like, can. oh, we want to come opening night. I'm like, I get two tickets for opening night and they're not going to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. they think you, it's like you do that for comedy shows. I'm like, all uh, the time. it's a door deal. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like you to pay. I can get you right. 30% off though. Really? Yeah. Send me a DM and I'll, I'll give you 30% off. Yeah. All right. Family you heard that friendly. here. Downside yeah. listeners, 30% off. That's yeah. a good deal. I think that I have a found friends and family promo code. I, I wish we had talked. We would have made this a Patreon exclusive, <laughs> but great. Yeah. Offer it for free. Um, Wait, uh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> this is... Okay, that's it. I usually have like seven, but yeah. This is the downside. One, oh, wait. No, I forgot to do plugs. Plug. I take it back. Oh my God! Plugs. What would you like to plug? Oh, when me. is I'm this on? When is this on? March seventh. Uh, we're releasing March seventh to, to time. Fuck. All right. Okay. So March seventh, I will be in previews. My show is in previews at fifty nine E fifty nine Street Theaters. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can say that. Come, please come. Uh, it's it's uh, running until uh, April sixteenth. And get my book. Yes, I can say that when they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. Great. What would you like to talk Titanic plug? at the Joe Roth Theater, eight shows a week. Come see um, it. Great. Uh, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. I forgot downside. one thing. What was that? I forgot one thing. Oh, go for it. Yeah. I have a podcast called Kill Me Now. Yes. Please fucking listen to it. Okay? Thank you, five stars. And whenever you talk about something Jewish, you do it, you ding a bell. Right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You have to do my podcast. Have you done my podcast? No, I haven't. Oh, you have to do my podcast. Uh, Judy, I'd love to do your podcast. We uh, so we have a Houston show, show, whatever you want. We have a Houston show, remember? Oh, we have yeah, but we don't have the date yet, right? I know. I you know. Fuck. Okay, so uh, uh, down to the listeners, I'm gonna be headlining in Hartford, Connecticut, <gasps> March 11th, uh, Comedy Fort, Fort Collins, uh, in, uh, March 17th and 18th, and then the weekend after that, Russell and I will be doing a live podcast in Houston as part of our first festival, mm. doing a live show. Uh, but otherwise, find me online for all my upcoming touring dates. And uh, uh, I was trying to time it with your sneeze last time. With uh, with uh, I usually sneeze like seven times in a row. It's so annoying. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to the downside. The downside with John Marco Cerezi.